Tom here from Lawrence System, and this True NAS Mini X Plus has 5,282 hours as of this morning before I unplugged it and set it on the table here, which is about 220 days of uptime. There's also on my True NAS Mini E 800 days of uptime. This is a follow up on those two devices because those are two of them that I have in use. Well, one at home and one here at the office. That's this one here. This video and other videos have all been edited on this device. This does have two onboard dual RJ45 10 gigs, and it does have an add in card of the Chelsea IO T520 SO dual SFP Plus, which I have connected to our XCPNG lab system for some VMs as in a target. So I've used iSCSI NFS. So I've put some paces on this. And of course, the uptime on this is not continuous. I've kept it up with all the latest versions of TrueNAS and all the different updates. And it's worked really well. Now, this specific system has an 8-core Intel C3758 at 2.2 gigahertz, 64 gig of DDR4, and 7 Micron 5210 ion SSDs in here. And yes, they're only in RAID Z1. I know there is a people out there probably saying, but shouldn't you do read Z2 in case there's a failure? And I just don't worry about failures as much because this is being replicated to another TrueNAS system on the regular. So between the replication it does locally, it also has backblaze on there to back up all the videos and anything I find important on here that I worry about losing. So this overall has been a solid system. And I wanted to do this follow-up talking about both of them because of course they worked when I first got them. And of course, after like a week of testing and I do a review, that's not as long-term. People are like, what happens? What failed? Did it get a lot of dust in it? Did the fans start making noise? Both of these systems are absolutely as silent from the, as the day I got them. Granted, they're not in high dust environments. Uh, that would be a different problem, but there was some dust in here when I took this down off the shelf, which some of you may know it sits back here, just in the edge of frame. It is still quiet and the fans had some dirt in it, but after blowing it out, uh, it really wasn't that much. So not too much air movement, but it doesn't really require much to cool these devices. So yeah, take that for what it's worth. Now, I will admit, not on this device, but my other one, my TrueNAS Mini E, this is the only failure I really have to report, which is the SATA DOM going bad. Now, I don't know what the cause was. I don't know anything more than the results of Huh, that's weird. There's a lot of errors on this system and it seems to be related to the boot drive. And then I rebooted it and it didn't. It told me it couldn't read this anymore and couldn't get the data off it. Now, it was out of warranty, I believe. I just went ahead and popped in another drive real quick and have it booting off of another one that I happen to have. And of course, because I back up everything, it wasn't a big deal. Uh, if you do not back up, especially because the keys to your drives if depending on the encryption you have set up could be located on here make sure you have a backup of those if you if i did not have that that would have been a much bigger deal to replace this but my overall on this setup right here is it works really well between the videos i edit on here the chelsea io for the target for the virtual machine storage and nfs and iSCSI. this handles it really well despite not being a super fast processor but it certainly meets the needs that well, that I have for this particular unit. We've recommended these to a lot of small businesses and deployed them as well. And same thing in the field. We really haven't had any problems with this system at all. And I know there's someone out there going, well, isn't it cheaper just to build one yourself or anything like that? And I'm like, there are deals you can find when you're building it. There is things you can do when you have these used. Matter of fact, the system that this replicates to is just another system that we have that's custom built. And it's actually been in service for like six years. It's a pretty old system. But it ain't broke, don't fix it is kind of uh, how I've been treating it. I'm kind of wondering just how long it'll last. It has quite a, almost six years of hours on some of the hard drives that I'm shocked haven't failed uh, for as much use as they see. But nonetheless, that's actually one of the beautiful things to me about the way TrueNAS works. You can use exactly the same, whether you buy an enterprise system with an SLA from the folks at IX Systems, you want something really high end, but then you can have it talking to a free NAS mini, and then you can even replicate it again to some custom built hardware that you've tinkered with. It's all the same software, enterprise level software that's able to run on your home built hardware, or for those of you that go, you know, I don't got time to tinker and build, I just want to buy a box that works that I know when I hit update that there's no quirky issues because of course TrueNAS is going to make sure and test hardware that they know and uh, this hardware has survived every update along with the other TrueNAS minis that we have uh, without even question. Updating remotely has never been a big deal and it's only mine. I've had no customers who've had these SATA DOM issues. So I don't know if any of you have seen this problem before. I thought it was strange because generally speaking I have some old SATA DOMs laying around from old systems that are 
really old and these just don't seem to go bad. There's actually not a lot of read write on these boot drives because we always take the data partition to make sure it's pointing at the ZFS array. But overall, I'm really happy with this system. I just wanted to do this follow-up video to let people know that, hey, it still works as good as it did. Uh, of course it does. I guess it should. it's not going to get any faster, but the software did get better. So we'll say that. The software did get better over time. TrueNAS has become a better product, especially now that they're at the U3 update. I just did a video recently on that. I've also curated a bunch of my TrueNAS videos that I'll leave in a playlist for all the new things coming out. And of course, every, anytime you check that link, you'll find more on there as I'm creating more tutorials for the latest version of TrueNAS 12. I'll leave links to the previous review videos where I dive a little bit deeper into the hardware if you're curious on this. And thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a Sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store, where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly. So check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.